Didn't we just do that? So here's the thing. It's It seems like it's still not completely solved because forensic scientists, this is from science.org, definitely incredible because it's science.org. Um, forensic scientists Nothing say of that interest here. they found uh, the identity using genetic tests published in 2019, mm. March 2019, that uh, point to Aaron Kaminsky, a 23-year-old Polish barber and one of the prime suspects at the time. Interesting. Although critics say the evidence isn't you, strong Holmes. enough to declare the case closed. You had to proceed into the square in order to see me, something Harvey didn't do. It is possible that the killer was still there. 1.42 a.m. PC Harvey arrives at Mitre Square, but does not go in. The murderer may well have still been there. That's interesting. So Aaron Kaminsky is the other one they think it could be. So it's not completely decided on whether or not it was Aaron or Ham Ham. Aaron? Aaron? No. Ham Hams? Was that Ham, his name? Ham Hams Hyam Hyams. Oh, I thought it was Ham Hams. Ham Hams? No wonder. No wonder he did it. What a tragic name. That <laughs> is a tragic name. He decided I've had enough of this. I've had enough of being made fun of by the prostitutes. I'll show them my Ham Hams. AM, the body is discovered. Let's put the murder of poor Eddowes on the timeline, Watson. So listen to this, by the way. Um, the results for Aaron came from... Jaeger? What? Jaeger? No, not Aaron Jaeger. Came from a forensic examination of a stained silk shawl that investigators said was found next to the humil mutilated body of Catherine Eddowes. Oh. Which was the fourth victim in 1888. The shawl was speckled with what was claimed to be blood and semen. The latter believed oh. to be from the killer. Like, he stayed and pleasured himself over it. I'm shocked that they didn't show that in this game. Him pleasuring himself over no, the victim? No, 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 like the the um the, the shawl semen? with the semen on it cuz wouldn't yeah, Sherlock that, be interested in that? That is odd, although there are this is a very There is a lot of discrepancies in this game with real life. And this is a very in-depth case with a lot of weird stuff and very little forensics to actually go off of at the mm -hmm. time. So you have to think that, like, whoever researched this game, obviously they got a, a lot right. But they got the Jack the Ripper left-hand, right-hand thing wrong. Kind of, yeah. I mean, there or at least there was a discrepancy in our investigation. And also, in real life, he was left-handed, not right-handed. But this game keeps trying to say, oh, he's right-handed! Yeah, well... I think that's very interesting, though. I, I really do wonder who actually did it and who this game will say did it. Because I kind of have a feeling that Mr. Leather Apron Guy either did it or it could be that butcher who got syphilis wait 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 wait. or what if it's like thanos where basically he's got people under him like how he has the black hand under him uh, and then he's got uh you know nebula and gamora and maybe like there's a whole group and like at the end a whole group comes out and they all say we are jack the ripper or it could be that butcher guy who said he got syphilis, but he didn't actually get syphilis. He's just going into hiding. I like mine better. Okay. Uh, put it in the right spot. Are you not getting breakfast tomorrow? I don't want breakfast. Sorry, you got to do it right then. Mm -hmm. 135 to 42. There you go. 135 and 142 a.m. The murder would appear to have taken place between these times. That is to say, within seven minutes. Agreed, Holmes. But does this really prove that our killer had the time to perpetrate these two murders? Let's look at our timeline, Watson. I'm sorry, Watson. Did I fucking ask? Sherlock and Watson took 20 minutes to go from Duffield's yard to Mitre Square. Oh. And that's part of our timeline? <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. I don't know where I'm supposed to put that, though. It doesn't say. Uh... Just put it in the open spot and see what happens. Like this spot right here? Yeah. Well, what time is it? Who knows? Just try it. When did we get here? I don't know. Well, there's a big open spot right here. Over the left. Let me, um... Let me look at my documents. It's a little douchey that we had to draw full-on pictures of ourselves. I think it's funny. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, by the way, um, that, uh, four other women in London were also murdered in a three-month spree and the culprit was never identified or confirmed. Really? 
Yeah, so it's possible. Do they not know if it's Jack? No, they don't. Oh. Um, That's interesting. Also, this DNA thing was not the first time that Aaron Kaminsky had been linked to the crimes. It is the first time that supporting DNA evidence had been published in a peer-reviewed journal. The first genetic tests on shawl samples were conducted several years ago by the Jerry Lohelelane, a biochemist at Liverpool John Moores University in the United Kingdom, but he said he wanted to wait for the fuss to die down before he submitted the results. Oh. That's a little weird. That is a little weird. Um, um, so we have another murder to commit in 40 minutes, he said. So, um, let's see. I also wanted to say that um, Lou Hellelane and David Miller, a colleague, a reproduction and sperm expert at the University of Leeds in the United Kingdom. That's also what I am, by the way. I'm not gay. I'm a sperm expert. Okay. Uh, claim that uh, they basically used the most systematic and most advanced genetic analysis to date regarding the Jack the Ripper murders. Interesting. They extracted and amplified the DNA from the shawl. So, it compared fragments of mitochondrial DNA, inherited only from one's mother, retrieved from the shawl with samples taken from the living descendants of both Eddowes and Kaminsky. Kosminsky. Oh, really? So basically they found DNA matches linking to living relatives. This is also, I think, how they caught the Golden State Killer in real life. Oh, really? Yeah, they. it was kind of like that 20... 3 and me or whatever it is type of thing where they have the DNA and it'll be like hey the, you know you're part Irish and part British and whatever mm -hmm. and they'll do that whole thing mm -hmm. well they they did that uh, on someone and a lot of that stuff ends up submitted to databases too and someone found like a match between like a living relative and the Golden State Killer wow so, that's crazy yeah. so they found like the match between the living relative and Jack the Ripper that's how it or worked. Or who they the, thought was Jack Yes, Ripper? and also they found a, a match between Ed Owes and a living relative of Ed Owes. Oh. Who's still, they're still descendants of Ed Owes now. That's crazy. Yeah, or family of them. They should play this game. I, I highly doubt they want much anything to do with that. I, I would. It's probably a they sore spot. Some. We are what? now certain that the murderer really had the time to commit these two murders. Incredible. This spot is making me nauseous. Uh, can we not head back, Holmes? We certainly can't, Watson. We have one final point to address. Do you remember the piece of white apron that was missing just now? It was found just a few steps away from here, at the entrance of a building. That's where we must go. Wait, the white apron. So is this the shawl? Yeah, this is the shawl that has semen on it. If it actually does in the game. Wait, so where, where did he say we have to go? I don't know. I was trying to listen, and you kept saying, listen to this, listen to this. Dude, I listen. I got excited. And so I couldn't hear it because all I heard was that. Just a minute. Okay. I have no reason to go that way. Let's go. Okay. You Let's found, go. You found it. I like the idea that Watson like, is pointing to all the places, and Sherlock's like, no, no. <laughs> No! There's the spot, Watson. By night, Goulston Street is deathly silent, which will permit us to carry out a fair few experiments. Let's find the entrance where the piece of the victim's apron and the mysterious chalk message were found. I'd let Sherlock experiment on me. Wait, wait, while we're here, we have to say Watson's famous line. Let's hurry, Holmes. This neighborhood makes me ill at ease. Let's hurry, Holmes. I think I saw a color of non-white complexion glance my way. <laughs> We need Great. to get out of here. Let's just find the entrance in which the piece of the victim's apron and the mysterious chalk message were found. Why does Sherlock always say pray at the beginning of sentences? Um, it means like, come along now or let's do this. Hurry it up. Was, it was just a statement at the time. Stop being slow, you stupid Watson. You stupid Watson. You I stupid have no Watson. reason to go that way. I have every reason to go this way. I think it's interesting how Sherlock Holmes has basically no friends except Watson. No, that's because he's annoying. He, I don't want to be his friend either. He's probably going to figure out that I stole, like, a, a small piece of eraser from a store when I was, like, five years old or something. That's and arrest true. me. It sounds like something that John Cena's character no would to do that in way. Transformers Bumblebee. <sighs> that's true. Did... What was Sherlock Holmes... A virgin. What? Why are we looking that up? 
I don't think he was. I think that he slept with Watson plenty. Nothing of interest here. That's true. Uh, so Nothing of interest here. Benedict Cumberbatch said that his version of Sherlock is not a is not a virgin. Oh well, who did he sleep with? Well, some people say Sherlock Holmes is described as being asexual, expressing no interest in either gender for any reason when it comes to sex. Honestly, some some interpretations of Sherlock that I kind of think are interesting is when they say things like, you know, how you have to think like a killer to find a killer. Yeah. Well, I kind of think Sherlock is really unfeeling, kind of like a psychopath serial killer is, but instead of using his stuff for evil, he finds the killers rather than actually murdering people. Yeah, he's like a Dexter who doesn't kill. Yeah, that's kind of how I think of him, actually. He, he is a bit unfeeling. He's interesting. He's not... A so he's not like a total psycho though, but I do think no. he's somewhat sociopathic a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Look at these signs, Watson. We are in the Jewish high street. Watson, look, where's son of a bitch? You hear him from upstairs. It's Solomon. <laughs> look at these signs, Watson. We are in the Jewish high street. Watson, look at this sign. Help me pronounce this name. So, Reddit had a, a debate about Sherlock Holmes being a virgin. Oh, really? Nothing of interest here. Sir Arthur... And Co Someone said Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Nothing Sherlock seems here. to be a virgin, as he is asexual. No reason to go that way. There's no mention of any no sexual that way. or romantic feeling relationships, uh, except one the where he engaged with to engage... High street. ...to get information. Mm. Um, but we don't know about his life before meeting Watson. There's the spot where the apron and the message were found by PC Long. Now, let's recreate the scene. Remember but I walked Watson, here before. Did it just that night. Find Did me something work with which was first person? raindrops hitting this wall while I write something with my chalk. I was literally here in first person the and he was like, I don't want to go that way. The are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. But what does it mean? Have you found something for us to pour water from, Watson? Find a container and some water. Let me remind you that it's nighttime and the street is deserted, Holmes. The Jews are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. But what does it mean? We've read that sentence before. Somewhere. Yeah, there's a lot of people who, who have talked about this Sherlock Holmes virgin thing. So what do you, what's your consensus on it? Um, it just seems like he doesn't care about sex, like he chooses to be celibate. That may come in handy, who knows? Well, I don't think he got the nickname Sherlock Holmes for nothing. I have no That's reason true. to go that way. That's actually a good point. I think that he's he's proven himself, but that he doesn't do it. Like, he's shown off his horse sure. His horse sure. You know? His sure horse. That may come in handy, who knows? But he doesn't use it. Oh. He's just shown it off. He's like Lyndon B. Johnson. He whipped it out a few times. I think he shows it to Watson a lot. Yeah, but like if you're gay, you still have virginity. That's my private school rules. Remember that I went to where they said, oh, if you do it in the back door, you're still technically a virgin. Yeah, I, I remember this. Sherlock operates by those kinds of rules, too. It's if I do it with Watson, I'm still a virgin because he doesn't have a vagina. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's, okay. pretty much, that's pretty much how it works. Heck. A watering can. That's what I need. But I can't reach it. thing you just got. You use, uh, equip that thing. A watering can. No, no, no. That's that what one. I need. You got a weird stick bowl thing. Yeah, there you go. It's like one of those weird claw things that a those Nickelodeon channels can. and stuff That's used to sell. That's what I need. But I can't reach it. You know how they'd sell the weird claw things? Yes. To kids? Yes. I, uh, I think I had one of those. You can't use this? No. You should be able to use that there. Yeah. A watering can. There's That's no way I you need, can't reach that. But I can't reach it. It's like a telltale game. An old wooden pole. A merchant probably threw it out. There you go, yep. Bobby, you're a genius. Perfect. Now we have a rake. Now we'll go home and rake Sherlock's yard. Oh good, we'll I'm come glad back we're gonna rake morning. his yard. We'll come back in the morning. Okay, I need to find that like little box thing that I stood on. I think before. you're going the wrong way. You think so? Yeah, it's the opposite way. Oh, it was no. Okay. It's so dark that I can't like see it. You can't like see it, or you I can't, can't like see it? see it. Oh, it's here. Here it is. There you go. Oh, I fell. 
Yeah, why don't you go into third person? It's going to be easier to see this part. <clears throat> there you go. Perfect. Shrewd. That's not the first time tonight he's had his hand on Sherlock's pole. Oh. Yeah. It won't be the last, I'll tell you that. What the heck? Jill, I don't like that you're shaming the LGBTQ community in this Let's Play. Well... I'm literally just promoting it, and you are, you're not. You're the one that's shaming the Jewish community in this Let's Play. That's fair, but like you said, <laughs> they won't not be blamed for not nothing, not. Nothing, not. Have you found something for us to pull water from, Watson? Yes, I have, Holmes. Good. Now find us some water. Oh, oh okay. okay. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Well, yeah. So anyway, long story short, from what we talked about before, there are several options of who could be Jack the Ripper still. I thought it was pretty much just discovered. It's not. Apparently, it's still a mystery. Yeah. It's interesting that it keeps coming up. It is interesting. Seems like people are still afraid. Well, they're not still afraid. They're just interested. They're still afraid. They're not, though. I have no reason to go that way. I'd still be afraid. Throughout the police investigation, they received hundreds of letters claiming to be the killer. Really? The, hundreds? The majority of them were fraudulent, but one in particular oh. stood out to the authorities as potentially genuine. That was from hell, which was received by George Lusk of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee. Which that is the was, one you read to us. That was no the one that came with a small way. box containing half a human kidney. Yeah, that's the one you read. And claiming that the other half had been eaten. Oh, that was gross. Now, now, let me point something out. Aaron Kaminsky, if he was the killer, was Jewish. So not only did they kill Jesus, but no. <laughs> well, you know, the reason they killed Jesus is because they thought no he was faking being way. the Messiah. Yeah. So maybe it's just these people are so holy that they thought that prostitutes were super unholy and they had to kill them too. Wow. Well, Cleanse you, the earth, you know? You, uh, I don't know if you made the Jewish community look better or worse with that summarization, but okay. Am I wrong? I would think probably made them look worse, but oh. fair enough. I don't know where there could be water. Why doesn't Sherlock just piss in the bucket? Piss in the bucket? That's yeah. a great idea. Also, where's that, where's that horse? I don't know. Oh, I didn't see that. I knew it was finished. The night. I did not see that at all. It's because it's too dark. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have homes. All right, now we're Sherlock, and we have to, I think, use that on the wall. If this message were written by the killer, then it would have been lying in this entrance for up to 35 minutes before being discovered. Let's find out in what state it must have been. This message could not have withstood an entire night in the rain. During the investigations carried out on the night of the double murder, PC Hulse inspected the entrances of this street around 2.20 a.m. and confirmed to have seen nothing out of the ordinary. At 2.55 a.m., 35 minutes later, PC Long found Catherine Edow's piece of apron and the message in chalk. This message would not have withstood a whole night in the rain, as had I continued to water it for a little longer, I would certainly have erased it. It was written, therefore, at the moment when the piece of apron was dumped. This substantiates PC Hulse's statement, which stated he had seen neither of these during his rounds. After its discovery, it was guarded and protected from the rain, which was subsiding, which explains why it was still legible when it was erased at half five. My dear Watson, when you met P.C. Smith on his rounds in the street, where was he? On the pavement or in the middle of the road? In the middle of the road, Holmes, without a shadow of a doubt. Good. You will go down the street with your lantern as if you were a policeman on patrol, using Smith's position as a guide. As soon as you see the entrance where I used the watering can, tell me if you see anything. But what was the other part? He said that the way that where he was, he wouldn't have seen there, him writing Holmes. it? From here, I can see something written. Can you read it? No. Do you see the white rag, Watson? Uh... No. No? I see something on the ground, but I'm not sure if it's what you were talking about. 
P.C. Long, who found the piece of apron, was examining the interior of the entrances, and yet nobody would have predicted that this piece of material would be discovered on the very night of the murder by a policeman on patrol. What are you trying to get at, Holmes? Let's look at this message on the wall, Watson. The Jews are not the men that will be blamed for nothing. In other words, the Jews were possibly blamed for nothing, but that will no longer be the case. Reading this message naturally begs one question. What would that be, Watson? Why? Indeed, Watson, why? For what reason would one have the right to blame the Jews in the future? Remember, Lestrade was killed near a club for socialist Jews, Eddowes not far from the synagogue and the Imperial Club, and finally, this piece of apron dropped here. This building is occupied by Jewish families. The killer really did go out of his way to incriminate the Jews living in the area. It's a bit obvious, Holmes. Yes, but with the rumors, Watson, the author of this message would have received a response to his strategy. You are right, Holmes. So perhaps it's a good thing this message was erased. Whoever took the decision to do this is a man of great wisdom and courage. Let's return to Baker Street, Watson. I have some pipes to smoke to help me think more clearly. <laughs> he smokes to think Let's go more back clearly. To Baker Street. Yes. Home sweet He's funny. Home. And in some of the games and continuities, he uses his pistol to shoot into the wall. Really? Yeah, which I don't know how is is legal, but he does. What the heck? He's definitely a character. He so the guy, is. the guy who did this wanted the Jews blamed. Yeah, it seems like he hated the Jews. And then Aaron Kaminsky came along in real life and possibly did it. Uh-oh. I kind of think it wasn't Aaron Kaminsky now at this point. In this? In this. Yeah. I think Aaron Kaminsky got blamed. I'm surprised they said nothing about the semen on the apron. I had nightmares all night, Holmes. As for you, I bet you didn't get a wink of sleep, did you? It's this chalk message business, isn't it? Among other things. And this lunatic is still running free. If only we knew what he looked like. But we do know, Watson. We have a fairly accurate description. I must have missed an episode of your adventures, Holmes. Not only have I heard you discredit the value of our eyewitnesses, but the few descriptions we do have don't seem to correspond. An inaccurate account can regain its value if we can discover why and to what extent the truth must be rewritten. We've learned a great many things tonight, and I'm able to tell you what our man looks like. Really? Yes, and we're going to need a few things, Watson. Find me three mannequins, my worker's costume, my three full wigs, one of your worn garments. Yes, that can be used for the workman's outfit, and one of your old suits. Oh, and my deer stalker, the one I never wear, but everyone seems to think I wear day and night. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. That hat that everybody thinks Sherlock wears, but he never wears it? That's what he said for us to go get? I think that's really funny. Well, now he's gonna wear it. No, he's not. He's gonna put it on mannequin. Oh, sorry. Stupid. Sorry about that. Are you dumb? We shall place our mannequins here, Watson. We only have one. Do we hide mannequins throughout our, our house? Yes. Yes, Watson. Okay. And there's a random uh, magazine way back there. Wait, that's a mannequin right next to you. Yes, Watson. That is a mannequin right next to me. Okay. Good job. Shut up. You're not as stupid as I thought you shut were. Shut up. What do you think Sherlock would do if Watson just started saying shut up to him? Do you think he'd cry? I, I don't think Sherlock would cry. I think that Sh Watson would be fired. Fired? I doubt he's paid. Uh, he isn't, but he would certainly be fired from f best friendship. Only friendship? Yep. Look, look, see, this is the hat everybody thinks he wears, but he doesn't. Oh, wait, no, that was a wig. Never mind. Does Dr. Watson get paid? No. How did John Watson earn money while working full-time with Sherlock? A wig. This will come in handy. Thanks. In the early days of their association, Watson was on medical leave from the army, having been struck with a Jezail bullet in the shoulder. Aww, that must have hurt. Though later they talk about it being his leg. He's put on half pay for nine months, and it is during this time that he meets Holmes and they move into 221 Baker Street. Sherlock's room is very messy. Later, Watson returns to his profession by acquiring a medical practice near Paddington Rail Station and becomes involved in Holmes' cases only when he drops in to see him. 
Or when Holmes turns up at Watson's house requesting his help. Sherlock Holmes is fake, right? He wasn't a real dude? Um, correct. Okay. After retiring from medicine and following the passing of his wife, that's sad, Watson moves back with Holmes to 221B Baker, or 221 Baker Street. So does he not live with his wife? Uh. What happened to living with his wife? He just lived here for so, part of the time. So, as for one of the murders, we have no witnesses whatsoever. As for the three other, we have at least one person who claims to have seen the victims talking to a man a few minutes before their death. Do you remember whom these would be, Watson? So, he lived with his wife, but then he, like, came to visit Sherlock and lived here part of the time as, like, little sleepovers? Yeah, sort of uh, well, yeah, uh, that's my understanding. Also, it could be different in this continuity, the games. Mm -hmm. They're their own continuity. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say that something that's kind of nice that Sherlock did for Watson is he allowed him to do his medical practice, uh -huh. and he mostly left him alone that's during sweet. that time. Mm -hmm. And then, after retiring from medicine and following the passing of his wife, Watson moved back with Holmes... But he had to sell his medical practice in order to afford doing it. Aww. We learned that the practice, this is from uh, someone on, I think, Yahoo Answers. It's Matt Beckett, who said uh, that we learned that the practice, the medical practice, was purchased by a distant relative of Holmes. But that it was secretly Holmes who had actually done the money to buy it. Mm -hmm. So basically, Sherlock Holmes bought Watson's medical practice to give him a bunch of money so he'd move back in with him because he was his friend. Aww. And then pretended that he didn't do it. Like, oh yes, a relative of mine bought your practice to use it. Aww. But it was actually Sherlock Holmes bought the practice so that he could be like, look, Watson, thousands of dollars. Now you can afford to live with me and go on our little butt buddy adventures together. Our butt buddy adventures. Yeah, so. I think that's sweet. It makes me sad. I'm glad they're not real. Yeah. 